everybody, it's Becky. I'm back today with part four of my Back to Homeschool series, and this is our homeschool haul for the 2015-2016 school year. There really isn't a whole lot. Most of these things are supplemental just because we have a lot of carryover left over from last school year that we'll be finishing up probably in the next six months or so, and then I'll have another homeschool haul later on probably um, early 2016. But this is gonna be supplementary to what we are already using and some things are new, but mostly everything is a supplement. So I've kind of got it separated by my oldest daughter, my youngest daughter, and then some stuff that they're gonna be doing together. So starting on my oldest daughter's side, I got her the typing instructor for kids. We had used this before back when we had a Windows computer and I didn't have a Mac, so I sold the Mac version. So now that I have a Mac, I needed to get the Mac version, and I was pretty happy with it. She types pretty well, but I really wanted her to work on some practice. So she'll be doing this along with typing some of her book reports and things like that. So I picked that up at Amazon, it's really inexpensive, and I'll put a link for that down below if you're interested. For her, I also got her her next level of teaching textbook. She's finishing up Math 6 right now and has maybe 20 more lessons in there. So since she usually does a lesson a day, that's not gonna last very long. So I went ahead and got Math 7. And of course I got the workbook and the discs. You don't have to have the workbook, but I like for her to be able to see her problems written out on the paper and then be able to figure it out on the paper versus just you know using the disc and maybe some scratch paper. So I do go ahead and get both. It's 150 for both. And I think if you just get the discs, it's 130, I believe, with free shipping. The only thing I don't like about their binders is they're really big and thick, which is nice because you get a lot of material, but they use a plastic ring or a plastic coil and it gets sproying really easily. Hers from that she's using right now got torn up not very long after we started using it and there really was no way to fix it, so it never really folded back right. I guess they probably use the plastic coil to keep costs down, but it, since it's such a big binder, I think they really could maybe do something a little bit heavier duty in that regard. But other than that, we are really happy with teaching textbooks and we'll continue to use it as long as it continues to work for her and for me. And some of these things you might have seen in some of my other homeschool videos. These in particular I talked about. Um, these are the National Geographic Kids Quiz Whiz Pack, Quiz Packs. There was four of these I got at the Dollar Tree. And so it's just basically like trivia and facts and little quizzes they can take about all different kinds of information about the world and history and animals and people and sports and pop culture and things like that. So there were four of those. That's just something fun she can do when she's got some downtime. Um, and I usually keep a little box of things that are considered approved free time work. So if I'm working with her sister and I still want her to be doing, doing something educational, um, I have a, a book, that, a box that she can go to and pick out anything from that box and it's still considered school and these will probably go in there. This came from, this came from the Dar uh, Target dollar spot and it is the World Landmarks book and I didn't get it for her to read necessarily because obviously it's really easy but one reason I liked it was I saw a video that Little Homeschool Mama did and they had a calendar that had World Landmarks and so each month they would pull out that calendar page and their kids would do kind of a project based on whatever that world landmark was. I haven't been able to find that calendar, but since I did find this, it's kind of the same thing. I haven't decided yet if we're gonna tear the page out or just kind of follow along and let her do kind of a little project and report about each of these places. Um, I haven't decided, but this is the closest thing I could find to that calendar that she had. Also from the Dollar Tree, I found these writing prompt cards, which were really neat. And they're obviously, again, um, you know, easy below her reading level but um, they are good, just good little short tidbits and facts and then kind of prompts her a question about whatever the card's about. And so they had a couple different categories. They had creative writing, sea life, earth science, and invention. So I got those for her. And we do a writing prompt with her every day, she does in her um, morning journal. Her workbooks, I've had some of these for a while. This one I did show in the um, the I think it was episode one of the Back to Homeschool series that I did. This is her Analogies for Critical Thinking book and it says grade four but I went ahead and got the lower grade level because she is in sixth grade but I got the grade four just because it's kind of a new concept for her the way that these questions and analogies are phrased. I wanted to kind of start her out a little bit easier and then we can work our way up as she progresses just because they do have um, higher grade levels than this. So I got her that we also got a new vocabulary and spelling book, 
And I wanted to find one that didn't just have a list of words, but actually had like sentences that you're supposed to use it in and little um, kind of puzzles and quizzes and different ways of using the words and working with the words and then just writing the definition and, and using them in a sentence. I wanted to keep it interesting for her and um, really drive in, you know, really help her to learn and retain the words that she learns, not just long enough to take a test and then forget it. So I got that from Amazon. Also from Amazon is the Blue Book of Grammar and Punctuation. This was highly rated, so I went ahead and picked this one. And it's all just different types of grammar rules and usage. And I hate grammar. It's not ever fun to talk about. But I just thought it would be a good reference for us to have um, for both girls going forward. And it's even for me to help me refresh some of the rules. Because, you know, you don't always remember the rules between things. Like whoever and whomever and who and whom and things like that. So I got that. And then also from Amazon, I think punctuation is really important. And especially in this age where so many kids text and email, she's not, I mean, she doesn't have a smartphone. But, you know, she does have an iPod that she can text, you know, us with and things. And so I want to make sure that we're focusing really well on grammar capitalization uh, and punctuation. So this is grades three through six, which fits right along with her being in sixth grade. And it's all just different ways to use the correct punctuation marks and things like that. And obviously she knows how to use, you know, exclamation marks, but commas I think are especially hard for people, apostrophes and things like that. So I got that for her as well from Amazon. And then some things we're going to be doing together. I actually purchased another one of these for my youngest daughter, but I just got the one out here to show you. This is the um, Scholastic Animal Habitats book. I just thought it would be really fun. There's another curriculum that we're going to be doing to go along with this. I plan on doing a 2015-2016 curriculum video for both my sixth grader and my kindergartner and you'll see more than what we're going to be using this book with but it shows you all these different types of areas where um, these animals are going to live and then you do all different types of like fold out and pop out books and things based on the, um, the ecosystem where these animals live. So I thought she would enjoy that and my youngest daughter can do it too and so I plan on that being another thing we're going to do together this year. This book also ties into um, the same thing I mentioned that I'm going to be showing you in the sixth grade video, all about landforms and things like that. So it's a very easy, simple book. It explains the difference in all these different landforms. So marshes and jungles and lakes and keys and islands and hills and highlands and headwater. And, I mean, so this is a really neat book, too. This is actually a book that is recommended, I believe, in the My Father's World curriculum, which we don't use. But I've heard really good things about this book, and I found a free printable resource that goes along with it. So that, combined with this, combined with the worksheets that I will show you in the sixth grade curriculum video, is all going to be kind of a one unit kind of a thing. So that's really all for my oldest daughter. I'm sorry about the glare right there. This is my kitchen snack bar, and the overhead light is shining on it. Um, I got this inflatable globe at the Dollar Tree. It's really big. I already bought one, and it did have a hole in it, so I had to exchange it. But... It's a really big globe. We already have a globe that talks to you and you can use the pen and touch different spots. But I just thought this would be fun to either hang up in the schoolroom or you know you could pass it back and forth and see if you could have like a quick fire round of naming states and continents and things like that. So I picked that up at the Dollar Tree. All this stuff is for my youngest daughter. And some of this again you might have seen in my Usborn book haul and some other things that I did recently, but this is my Kindergartner's Illustrated Elementary Science Dictionary from Usborn, and I loved the math one that I got so much, which was the first one I got. I loved it so much that I got the science one. So let me show you the science first. And this is going to be kind of my guideline for what to teach her during her elementary school career. I mean, at some point with her, we might do more of a box curriculum or a set curriculum with science, but it, at least in the beginning, I'm not, it's not going to be anything terribly strenuous. But this is going to help us to kind of figure out what we need to talk about and the subjects we need to touch on. So life processes and reproduction sensitivity of plants, uh, living and non-living things and cells, um, plants and plant life, photosynthesis. I mean, these books are so cute, and I love the colors and the pictures. And the way that they're written is perfect for her age level. There is one that's a little bit of a higher up, more higher up. Actually, no, this might be... Yeah, this is the higher version. There was a, a little bit of a lower age range version that I think it was my first illustrated elementary science dictionary. I went ahead and got this one just because I didn't want it to be too easy. I'd rather it be a little bit too challenging in spots that we could skip over and then come back to rather than it being too easy. So I just love the pictures and this is a book that has a quick links. 
So you go to the website and enter in the, the little password, and it gives you more re resources for um, some online places you can look for more information. So I love that. I'm excited to use that. And then I did show this in the Esborn Hall. So quickly, I'll just show you again. This is the first illustrated math dictionary. There's another level after this one, at least one, maybe two levels after this, I think. But this is really easy and basic, kind of just starting out talking about capacity and measurement and um, units and coordinates and symmetry and position using a calculator, counting in groups, skip counting, multiplication, adding and subtracting. So this is going to be a good supplement for us to her math program, kind of keeping us on track, adding extra practice. And I love the way that this book shows you different representations of the same thing, which is a lot of what math is. So if there's a concept that she's not grasping, you know, this will be something we can refer to. So like in this example, the number five written out, the number five, five pairs, showing out a domino, the visual representation, tally marks, Roman numerals, Chinese numbers, um, you know, on the number line where number five is. So I just think, I just think it's going to be a good resource for us to have to help her and to help me explain all these different concepts and kind of keep us on track. So I got that for her. For both girls, I got the Usborne Children's Encyclopedia. This one's really neat because it has the QR link, so you can scan it and get even more information. And I believe it also has the Quick Links option, which most of the Usborne reference books do have. I don't see it. Yeah, this one does have it. So it's a it's a place where you go and you can it's all like approved and safe websites that your kids can go to to find more information. But this is going to go over the world, animals and plants, history, how your body works, how people live, how things work, science, space, maps. So for both girls, it's going to be a really good resource to have. We could probably use it to pull out some unit studies. We could use it just as a you know a reference instead of maybe always instead of googling something all the time. Maybe look it up in a book like we had to when we were kids. But the pictures are really nice and colorful. Um, it's just a really really pretty book. And I'm excited to use it. And it is a softback. I do think they had a hardback version, but I just went ahead and got the softback. So I like that. And again, I showed this in the Esborn book haul. This is just the Lift the, Lift the Flap General Knowledge book. So again, one of those books that, you know, if there's some downtime and the girls want to look at books instead of maybe doing worksheets or something, there's plenty of information in here. And as I mentioned before in their book review for the book haul I did, just because it's a lift the flat book does not mean that there's not information in here that my oldest daughter could not stand to learn from. And me as well. There's things in here I didn't know. So it's not necessarily just what you would consider a baby book just because it's a lift the flat book. So we're going to be using that kind of as a resource here and there when needed. Again, from Us Born, even though I'm using a different reading curriculum for her, I did get her the Start to Read pack. And basically, this is a standalone reading program. They have a website called TeacherMonsterToRead.com, I believe it is. I'll put the link down below, where they follow a certain learning pattern of how to teach your kid to read. And this, this book goes along with the same pattern. So they, they teach different word, uh, different letters and different ending words and things like that than the reading curriculum that we're going to use does. But it's still a good resource to have. And I like these books that came in this set because... They are leveled readers, and there's two of each level, so you get two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, and two number fours. But one thing I like about it, let me take that post-it note off there, is it's a dual reader. So in the beginning, especially when she's really just knows just a couple words, the parent reads one side, and then the child can read the words on the other side. And so as the books progress, and as they progress with their reading, there's less and less for the parent to read, and more and more for the child to read. And so... You know, like I said, it doesn't follow the same um, method of reading that we're going to be using, or at least for a little while. But it's still a good practice for her, some nice books for her to have. It came with Bad Jack Fox, Pirate Pat, Double Trouble, The Dressing Up Box, Captain Mac, A Bus for Miss Moss, The Perfect Pet, and Dog Diary. So I think she'll really like those. They have a really nice soft cover, and they're decent in length, so I was excited to get those. And you might have also seen that I did get the Matthew C. program for her. This is the primer version. Um, and I have I took all the pages out of her student workbook and put them in a binder. So this is the instruction manual. But if you don't know about Matthew C., it basically uses all these manipulatives, which I put into this bead box. The only ones that didn't fit were the 100 blocks. Um, so when we get to using those, then I'll have to keep them out, obviously. But this holds all of her other blocks and so you use the manipulatives to teach math concepts and so for her I think that's going to be really good she's a very hands-on child she likes to 
handle things and you know so I think that's going to be good for her to grasp the math concepts better so as you can see by the books obviously this is kind of 20 so this is lesson 14 but it's going to use the blocks to teach them to count and for addition and subtraction they even use the blocks to teach time um, and so as you see here the little blocks are making the face of a clock and so this is going to last us, I don't know if it will last us the whole year or not. Um, we can obviously work at our own pace. And I did notice some of the beginning lessons are a little easy for her, or they will be a little easy for her. But we're going to go ahead and do them anyway, just so we can finish the whole book start to finish. And I can give you a better idea of what we thought about it. So I do have that for her. These flashcards I picked up at the Target dollar section, I just have flashcards for money. Also telling time, which we haven't started yet, but we will be by the end of the year. So I got those. And then flags of the world flashcards, both girls could stand to use those. So I thought that was really neat. So I got those at Target. At the Dollar Tree, I got her this word search book, which before we've used word searches for her just to find certain letters. But this one's neat. I liked it because it not only is a word search, but it's got a little bit of information about whatever the words. So like these are all sports words. So it's got some information about sports and then just a little think about it section. So it's just neat how it, it teaches them something and also being a word search. So like there's something about Canada and South America, the oceans and the sea, um, the universe. So different things like that. So I did find that at the Dollar Tree uh, probably two weeks ago. So they might you might still be able to find that. And then the last thing is her reading program. And this is something I purchased off Teachers Pay Teachers. I'm not going to go into it a whole lot right now just because there's a lot to it. This is... Um, what could be one week's of work, one week of work. We're actually going to make it at least two weeks probably. Um, but she focuses on sight words and word families all together in the same lesson. So you're not having to go out and do a certain curriculum for sight words and a certain curriculum for word families. Everything's all together. She gives you a lesson plan, which I will follow loosely. So I have it in there and each unit I have in its own folder. So this is unit one. So this is all the work she's gonna do for unit one. So it's got like word family flowers and you color the sight word, find the sight word, which that's actually a confessions of, the home, of, a, of a homeschooler's um, worksheet. And I'll show you again, when I do her curriculum, I'll show you whose who's worksheet is whose. I kind of combined some of the other worksheets from other people that I liked with this lady's curriculum. So it's just, I just feel like a really neat approach to me to combine them both together that way it doesn't seem like two separate things. Everything kind of flows in together and you're doing a lot of repetition and practice. I went ahead and cut out all these word cards and laminated those for whatever word family we, we were working on that week. So I think it's gonna be really great once we finish the first unit and if, if I like it, I'll, I'll buy the next unit and I'll let you guys know what I thought about it. So that is our homeschool haul for right now for the 2015-2016 school year. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to put links for all this stuff down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.